All right, thank you so much. Words of wisdom there to get you on the right footing on the program this morning. The program still this morning on ITV on Independent Television with Evans Nokuge, uh, Wednesday edition. And uh, it was a big show of shame yesterday for uh, governmental agencies, you may want to say, the uh, DSS and, of course, uh, officials of uh, the correctional uh, services in the country. The issue of emifili, uh the last is probably not heard yet. And uh, some persons say that emifili is going through what people call the law of karma in the local parlance. You know, when you do something wrong, uh, definitely uh, nature has a way of going and getting back to you. That's what the law of karma says. That's what and how some persons are explaining the travails of a uh, former or the suspended governor of uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria. We understand that he's been going through a whole lot. And of course, uh, yesterday, uh, he got uh, a bill uh, to the tune of 20 uh, million naira, and also uh, to have a surety, uh, one surety in like sum of uh, you know that surety, and also to uh, make available 20 million naira. And of course, why Amy Philly was still trying to put himself together? Because um, as at the time the pronouncement was made, the judgment was uh, given, he has not paid the 20 million naira, and uh, the judgment was that pending when that. Uh, uh, bail is given, a Mifile uh, stands to be in custody. So the big question came up, who should now be in custody of a Mifile? Was it the DSS that a Mifile uh, came with, or uh, was it the uh, officials of the correctional services that a Mifile came with, or the DSS uh, that uh, were willing to take a Mifile away? And the DSS responded that uh, they have order uh, to take a Mifile away, and uh, hence we saw the fiscal uh, that we saw uh, yesterday at uh, the Federal High Court in uh, Lagos. A big story you may want to see, uh, just like what I said, that uh, the list is not heard yet. So, independent radio and television, we're going to make sure that we follow the nitty gritty of the story so that we bring you all as far as uh, that story is concerned. Well, to look at uh, what happened yesterday, the travails of a Mayfield, you may want to call it, and uh, emanating issues now. We're so privileged to have a big time polit uh, politician here. Uh, he looks young, but uh, one guy that is making uh, you know, a caution in uh, the political space in the local government uh, uh, area. I'm talking about my own namesake, Mr. Evans in Obakai Osunde. You're welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, sir. TV. It's uh, our debut. Uh, so <laughs> when we call, you're going to be coming more on uh, this program. Of course I will. All right, so what do you make of uh, the travails of a uh, Mayfield assistance now? Um, shameful. Um, what happened yesterday was um, one that um, tends to bring the nation to um, a shameful state. Uh, when you see security operatives fighting themselves in public, it's, it's really, really shameful. And um, Emefele is someone who I, I think has stepped on a lot of toes, and um, those toes have made their ways into government. And uh, I think he's been used as a scapegoat right now and um, I says I said something to some persons the other day I said an injury to one is an injury to all. we saw how the government of the day has continued to hold um, Manzio Nambikano uh, even after the ruling of the the, the court that it should be released so I, I saw a lot of persons applauding that and um, yesterday it happened to uh, in Mayfield, and um, it's now a matter of who next it will happen to when a, a nation that does not um, no longer respect the rule of law uh, we now do things on our own it's, it's, it's really shameful so um, it, it will record that uh, uh, in Mayfield was granted bail by the court yesterday but um, the DSS refused to do um, what the court have, have ordered and they did otherwise. So it's now becoming norm in our society for uh, people to just take laws into their hands even after the, the, the court have decreed. So it's, it's just really, really shameful. Mm, people taking shameful. laws into their hands. Yeah. And I, we're going to follow that. I think we may start with Godwin in Mayfield yeah. uh, because we saw all that happened during uh, the era of the bank, uh, you know, the policies that he was trying to introduce, yeah. the monetary policies he was trying to introduce and all that. Despite the Supreme Court's order yeah. that Nigerians should go ahead and use the Naira note we had. But uh, the CBA governor blatantly uh, refused. So uh, is it right to now say that a Mayfield probably 
uh, was the first person that uh, went against uh, the rule of law in the first place. Uh, I, I, I would say so, but I, I, I also think that, uh, you know, that was an election period. Mm. I also think um, he, he was trying to sabotage. Uh, I also think yeah. he was trying to um, probably sabotage the the the, the election. Uh, but um, but if you look at if you look at what happened then, mm. you wouldn't really blame him because uh, he was he was a member of the the ruling party, mm. and uh, we still have the ruling party in government government today. So uh, I think um, Emifili uh, must have acted on instructions okay. of um, those who were, who were high up. Mm. But um, the government of the day um, probably don't, uh, really didn't think the, the, that um, policies actually favored them. Mm. So, but um, when you say that he was the first person to uh, not abide to the rule of law, it, like I said, it's, it's now becoming known. Where people don't don't um, um, actually just um, uh, agree to what the court says, they just do their own biddings. Mm. So I, it, it's shameful. I think um, something really needs to be done. And you, when the judiciary have not also played a a, a, a very um, honourable part in, in their own uh, rights, because um, uh, we, when you see what um, the, the decisions that is coming out from Detroit these days, um, people tend to just uh, ignore and do their own um, thing. So okay. uh, I think I think uh, it may, it may really I stepped on lot, like I said, mm. and that is what is really, really playing out right now. All right now, yeah. so we take a quick uh, pause now so that uh, we'll bring uh, the next guest. I, I talked about here, Mr. Kenny mm -hmm. Rousset. Uh, who is also a political analyst, a public affairs analyst too, so that um, uh, we look at more issues as it relates to uh, suspended uh, Serbian governor, Mr. Gordon Emefile. Now, when we return, we're going to be showing you some video footage to further portray uh, what actually happened yesterday uh, at uh, the Federal High Court in Lagos. Just stay tuned. Heavily armed security personnel of the Department of State Services, DSS, engaged in a free-for-all with officials of Nigeria Correctional Services, NCS, over custody of the suspended former governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin Emefile. However, an unidentified highly-ranking officer of the Nigeria Correctional Service was beaten to stupor and arrested by DSS officials, who later mobilized more men to counter the attempt by prison authorities to take custody of Emefile. Moments before the fight broke out, the prison authorities had mobilized more men to take custody of Emifili as ordered by the court. Lawyers and journalists covering the matter scampered for safety to avoid being beaten by the DSS officials who positioned their men in strategic locations around the court premises to prevent the suspended governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emifili, from being taken out of the courts. A Fosa Wangwe, ITV News. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ifosa Wangwe. There, that was uh, the scenario yesterday at uh, the Federal High Court in Lagos over the story of uh, former or suspended uh, governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria now, Mr. Gordon Emefile. What are the issues? What are the concerns? And of course, uh, is it a story of uh, that is what he deserves, or that uh, uh, a story of federal agencies trying to show? Uh, which one is more powerful? Talking about the DSS and, of course, uh, uh, the Nigerian Correctional Center. We've got Mr. Kenny Rousset also joining us on the show this morning. Mr. Kenny, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, I, I saw you smiling while we watched that video footage. What, what are your responses? Okay, thank you. Good morning, Nigerians. Uh, my first response will be that uh, it is saddening that the Nigeria state has degenerated to this level of impunity that we are witnessing. Under the last eight years of the APC federal government, we have constantly seen this kind of disregard for court processes, disregard for court valid judgments, court uh, injunctions, and all whatnot. We have uh, cases in point, like the case of uh, Zakazi of uh, Kaduna State. We have the case of uh, Nabdi Kanu. We have the case of even uh, 
Tansuki, mm. the former NSA to President Jonathan. Severally, judgments were, or orders were issued by the court, and they were disregarded. And we have also witnessed this low level, it's, uh, it's, a new, it's a low herb right now in our national history, the low level of rivalry, inter-rivalry between agencies, security agencies. They seem not to be properly organized when they are carrying out their functions, particularly the DSS. It is sickening that you, in this time and in this time of our democracy, we still experience a military gestapo style of attitude exhibited by the DSS. Oh. This is not the first time they are doing this. They have done it several under the Buhari's government. And we thought with the coming of uh, President Tinubu, who we all see as a Democrat, at least the former president was a military person. And uh, perhaps he didn't know or he didn't learn on the norms of uh, democracy and civil rule. But I least expect this from a Democrat, a Democrat called President Bola Tinubu. And I expect or I'm hoping that within the next 24 hours, it should react to what has just happened mm. in the court. Well, uh, little wonder whether it has to do with the president now, because we are looking at um, uh, a situation that uh, came on uh, before the presidential election, how uh, banking policies were introduced, monetary policies were introduced, and of course, uh, a mefile was at the center of it all. Uh, despite the court's orders, the Supreme Court's order, that uh, a mefile and his policies should return Nigerians and, uh, you know, uh, Naira notes to how we were, what we knew, the 1,000, the old 1,000 Naira and all that. And of course, uh, Mr. Gunn and Emifile refused. You know, so uh, for some people, they see Emifile that, look, you went against the rule of law in the first place. So now that you are being paid in your own coin, uh, you should take it the way you see it. Yes. Uh, Emifile once disregarded a court ruling. I think the Supreme Court in this instance. But that doesn't make it right. Like the, the saying goes, two wrongs don't make it right. Mm. Yes, Emefele did his own when he was in government or under the Boris administration. But that is why I said President Tinubu, as a Democrat, should, now, should not now promote impunity in our country. This is clear impunity. You are talking of a court of law, a well considered court of law, all that's being disregarded. It doesn't tell well of a country. I mean, it's going to scare the international communities, the investors, who we are planning to bring down to Nigeria. Because no investor will come and invest in a country when it's not sure of the rule of law, when it's not sure that judicial processes or rulings will be obeyed or carried out by the executive. Because let me tell you, it's one thing for the judiciary to make pronouncement. Uh -huh. But who, are the, who is supposed to be the chief executor of this, prona of this pronouncement by the judiciary? It's the executive. That is why I keep hammering on the person or the person of the president, pr President Bola Tinubu. Because both agencies are under his control, under his purview. Uh -huh. They are federal agencies. The Nigeria Correctional Center or Nash uh, National uh, Nigeria Prison Services, as they call them, I don't know. They have different names now. Uh -huh. Then the DSS. They are under the presidency. Uh -huh. they, are, they, are, they are under the they are federal government agencies. So they are answerable to the president? They are answerable to the president, exactly. I, in the same society, my brother, I expect by now, the director general of the DSS should have resigned. Okay, uh, Ahmed Bichi, that's his name now, that's yeah. uh, the director uh, general of the DSS. We understand that uh, relevant all uh, agencies are questioning him, uh, the way his men behaved yesterday. A away from that now, let me come back to you now, Mr. Evans. Now, uh, what happened yesterday? Because we're trying to look at who went against the rule of law. Now, it was the DSS that brought uh, Emifile to the courts. Yeah. Now, a pronouncement was made. He was granted a bill. As at that time, he was leaving. He had not f paid the bill. He has not paid the, the, the 20 million naira. The one person surety has not been provided. So th that bill was not going to be, uh, that bill was not, going to, was not there, not until he paid. So little wonder, would a Mayfield had gone with uh, the correctional service official or returned back to officers of the DSS, given the fact that the bill was not paid? Uh, 
the way it's done, the, the correctional services were supposed to have taken him away and um, remind him in, in prison custody until uh, he is able to meet the bill conditions. Conditions. But the, what happened yesterday was um, a, a situation whereby the DSS do not want to um, leave a, a grip on um, MFLA. Mm. They want him in their custody. <coughs> and if they have left um, MFLA to go with the, the prison um, service, mm. it means they, they, don't, they no longer have the control over him anymore. So that, that was why there was a, a chaos yesterday. Mm. Um, the ruling from the court means it now becomes a property of the prison service. Mm. So then I think those who breached um, the law yesterday were, were the DSS who refused to uh, abide by the rule that the court have um, ordered. Mm. So that was what happened. And I, um, the, the correctional service, they were right to have stood their ground because um, after any ruling in court, the, um, um, the, the person who is uh, 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 guilty oh. is supposed to be reminded in prison, not um, handed over to the DSS back. So that was what happened. I think um, the correctional service did nothing wrong to have wanted to um, do their duties on that uh, faithful day. Okay, yeah. Mr. Kenny said now uh, there are insinuations that uh, this administration is still new, there's no doubt about that, but there are insinuations now that uh, it looks as if this administration is on a vengeance uh, mission. Uh, Gordon and Mayfield in suspension, and of course uh, one or two other persons going through trials and all that. Now, uh, if President Ahmed Bolatin will, did not win, uh, do you think these men would have been uh, on suspension? Would they have been quizzed by relevant authorities? What do you think this administration, what do they really want to do with what is going on with all these uh, personnel? Okay, one of the problems we have always had in our democracy, I think not only in Nigeria and all of our, almost, uh, okay, most African countries, is that we always personalize government mm. or governance. This government, is not per government or governance is not personal. The fact that the Mefele may have worked, allegedly worked against the president during the last election, according to the claims of the president then, doesn't make it right for the, uh, the president to be seeking vengeance. That will be very petty on the part of the president if he's seeking vengeance against the Mefele. Rather, mm -hmm. well, he should, should have concentrated on the issues. Mm. The issues are that did the Mefele actually did the wrong thing by the policies he introduced? I mean, the Naira redesign policy. Or were there cases of fraud? Or were there instances of uh, maladministration under his. There are charges stewardship. against him now. <laughs> but these are not the charges against him. That is even the funny thing about it. The charges against him by the DSS is. The issue of uh, illegal possession of firearms. Yeah, that's the latest. Uh, we, before that one, we had various charges against him. Uh, so the, the latest one that uh, uh, people are talking about now is the illegal possession of firearms. We have a series of charges against him. So whether vengeance or not, a Mayfile has charges against him, and he has to answer to those charges. Yeah, that is even what is amazing Nigerians right at the moment. Before the advent of the uh, Tinibus administration, DSS one time declared the same MFLA wanted for terrorism sponsorship, or rather they, they alleged that it was sponsoring terrorism. And they told Nigerians that they have facts. And he was being pursued everywhere. At a point, it was even the military that had to provide cover for him when he came from outside the country then. I think he went on leave there, and when he came back, the three DSS tried to arrest him. Mm. So yeah, after the moment uh, Tinibum became president, Little after a little, after a while, he became he was inaugurated as president. The DSS went immediately went after a Mefeli and arrested him. Yesterday marked the forty sixth day that he was detained under the DSS. Mm. The DSS who claimed that they had proofs, facts of a terrorism sponsorship by Mefeli could not even prosecute him for for terrorism. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Rather, they brought they brought something very infantile. If you ask me meaningless charge yeah. of the firearm possession. Yeah. That is a billable offense. Mm. So the truth of the matter is that they are on a, on a, they are on a 
they are on a, a, a mission of yeah. personal vendetta mm -hmm. against Emefele. I don't know the problem Emefele has with the Director General of the DSS or the DSS as an organization as it is, but I quite understand that this has gone personal. It's no longer governance. It's not, we're not talking of administration now. We're talking of personal issues because it started even before President uh, Tinubu was inaugurated, uh, was inaugurated, or even won the election. Mm. So I, I think the problem here is between the DSS and, gov and a former governor of a central bank, uh, Mayfield. I'm not even sure it has to even do with the president. That's even what is worrying me as a person, or what is disturbing me as a person, because this issue started way before the president be uh, won the election. Yeah. So how come the issue still persists? Oh. How come now we don't have a president who's elected and he cannot go into, into the issues, at least set up a, a panel of inquiry or whatever, to find out what is really happening between the DSAs and the former uh, governor of Central Bank. Okay. All right. So let's just let uh, the uh, video uh, roll one more time as we draw the conclusion of this segment, this first segment from Benin. Now, uh, uh, back to you, Evans. Now, now, uh, what are the lessons to be learned in this whole Mefele, DSS, and uh, officials of uh, correctional services? The whole story, you know, in general. What are the lessons to be learned? Um, Why the video uh, goes on? When I saw Mefele yesterday, um, he states of health. Uh, it was nothing to write home about. And uh, it reminded me of a um, few months ago when he was the high and mighty of Central Bank. So I think um, as a person, wherever you find yourself today, use that office well for good because um, tomorrow might not be yours. Uh, I think um, there are a lot of lessons to be learned because uh, he also, like you said, also decided to... Um, discard the ruling of the the, the Supreme Court at the yeah. time, yeah. and um, it has come now to backfire against him. <laughs> so um, there, there, are, there are lots, uh, especially um, um, uh, in, uh, those of us in the political space. Mm. We have to take a lot of clue from this because um, you are in office today it does not mean you'll be there forever. When you live there, uh, if if you decide to put um, a lot of um, enemies behind you. You, you have a lot of issues. Accountability matters. Of course. Of course. Now. Of course. All right now. So.